Did you guys see what happened with Keffels? That's actually pretty funny to go over. Honestly, it's pretty funny. And Tipster, honestly. I mean, it's kind of the same, cut from the same cloth. So Willie Mac Show, commentator that I like a lot personally, and I think is swag. He was making a video about Keffel, so he decided to reach out to her for comment. She said, I'm sorry, but this is really weird behavior. He subscribed to multiple Patreons I run to make an epic takedown video of me. I locked him twice and he DM'd me two days consecutively to try to get more dirt on me. This just feels creepy. Is it creepy? I mean, is it creepy to reach out for comment? If anything, that's like the right thing to do. He was literally just asking her about the allegations around the GoFundMe and she was like, this is creepy. YouTubers aren't journalists. They do not buy by any code of ethics and have no interest in participating in any of this. What the f*** does that make you? Where'd the $100,000 go, Keffles? What happened to a uh, DIY HRT hormones website or whatever that you were donating to? What happened to that? The, the DIY HRT directory, what happened with that? Anyway, I blocked him. I'm not interested in fighting with him or doing drama slop content about it. I'm genuinely done with this incredibly toxic sphere of the internet. Wow. Well, whose fault is it that you got involved in that, Keffles? I wonder whose fault it is. Oh wait, it's yours for making a ton of drama videos and engaging in drama and lying about Kiwi Farms and lying about what happened to you with the police. I wonder why. I wonder why you got involved in that, dude. Also, as far as toxic, like it seems like the least toxic thing to do to ask you for comment. And also, Willie Mac Show is not a toxic creator. He makes pretty tame videos, I would say. This is based. So then another funny thing that happened is uh, if you go to Tipster's channel and go to the videos tab, videos are not doing very well. If you go to Keffel's channel, it's the Bosch video. And then here we have Nick tweeting out, both of these are active drama content creators. I think the drama side of content creation encourages harassment and obsessive behavior that makes you a worse person. I fell into the trap of making drama content and engaging in the same behaviors people have used to hurt me. I deeply regret it and I'm sorry to those I've hurt. <laughs> That's literally what you do, though. Like, you still do that. You were doing it a week ago. One week ago, you were defending Vosh for being a lollicon. Like, how is this anyone's fault but your own? How can you blame anyone but yourself? And this is always the thing. Like, it's always just like passing off personal responsibility, right? This is always how it has to be. You can never accept responsibility for your actions. You can never accept responsibility for what you've done. It always has to be someone else's fault. It always has to be. With Keffels, she'll never take responsibility. Tipster says, that brand of content brings out the worst in everyone. It made me a person when I look back, I'm ashamed of. I genuinely wish I never got wrapped up in it. We all make mistakes. All we can do is do better moving forward. So if you look up Tipster on YouTube, right, you go to his channel, which is hard to find because literally everything in the search results is people on him. Why does my stream come up in search results before Tipster not even related to him? That's epic. If you go to the channel tab, let's see if we can find it. What? You can't even... <laughs> he gets so few views you can't even find his channel. Let's look up Tipster Bosch. Here we go. Okay. You go to his channel, he still does drama content. Boogie Tuna Day has become an anti-woke grifter. Well, what kind of content is this, Tipster? These mass flagging campaigns, they're going to attack people who do that. So just, just don't do that. Just <laughs> if somebody's legitimately... This is drama content. This is you sitting on your fat ass making drama content like the rest of us. When people make hit piece after hit piece on you, it feels cathartic to get down on their level and engage with people in the same way. But that means lowering yourself to their standards and hurting other people for AdSense revenue. It's disgusting and I feel bad for it. Me too. Literally look at this guy's channel. Video about Boogie. Video about JK Rowling. Video about whoever this guy is. Video about Andrew Tate and Aiden Ross. Video about the quartering and whoever this girl is. I don't remember her name. Video about Smash Bandicoot. You're making drama content. That's what you're doing. Video about Wilbur Suit allegations. You're making drama content, you fraud. If you're making drama content, you cannot complain about the fact that people see you as a drama creator and that you're in the community. This is your fault entirely. Me too. So epic, dude. I'm chaotic good destiny. Meth legally prescribed. <laughs> I guess the meth wasn't legally prescribed. True. Yeah, she's like a crack addict or something. Traumatized people don't try and fail to start an IRL streaming career off the cloud they got from being swatted and fleeing the country. This is one of the funniest things Literally one of the funniest things from the Keffels thing is she flees to Ireland and then starts IRL streaming when she's supposedly afraid of being doxxed. You should wear a colander on your head. I probably have one somewhere. I could do that. So Tipster starts getting upset over the fact that when you search up the Tipster name like I just showed, you can't even find his channel. It's just people sh on him because he's irrelevant and no one cares about him, right? I've had several people inform me of this in the past 24 hours. I've checked and confirmed my channel is not so showing up in search. I've contacted Team YouTube for assistance. And the obvious answer is just like he's getting less views than people sh on him so he's not going to come up and search right and here we have nick scrolling through and just trying to find the tipster channel can't find it right i found a way to find tipster's channel if you search tipster lolly youtube shows this is his first channel result and so tipster decides to reach out to youtube support and they clearly are just like yeah the reason why you're not doing well is because your channel sucks well i'm going to share details with you please know that like google search engine search on youtube strives to service the most relevant results channels and videos are ranked on base of a variety of factors including how well the title description and video content match the viewer's query but this doesn't make any sense. Why would my channel show up in search day one, but not show up in the next day? Well, because that day more people were searching for videos on you than people were searching for videos that made by you. And that's been the case for a long time. I'm surprised it took this long, you know? I really am. But it's kind of epic. Like, that's what you get when you get 
owned. Here we have Boogie saying, did I body Tipster so bad they shadow banned him? I guess Boogie put out a video about Tipster. He put out like a Tipster drama video. My response to Tipster. All right, I guess we'll have to check this out or something. I guess I have a moral obligation to check out this video. And then I also want to check out this video by Keffels. And then maybe if we have time, we can watch the Willie Mac video that just recaps everything. Because why wouldn't we, right? Why, why wouldn't we watch the Willie Mac video about Keffels? Keffels. I know it's going to be a good one. So we got to check it out. Willie Mac show is like, you know, Keffels can say what she wants. Willie Mac show is like genuinely doing journalistic content on YouTube. Like better than most journalists do. Literally his about Andrew Tate got cited in multiple news articles because he was the only one doing research about his lawsuits. Is Destiny watching the George thing right now? Is that what I'm hearing? Is that what I'm, I'm being told about by my lawyer? Hey, buddy. Who is that? Your mom? Tom? Yeah, dude. Oh. Did you watch George's What's response? That? I heard this. My lawyer told me. Uh, yeah. What about it? What do you think about it? Uh, I mean, it seems like that Katie girl actually like just flat out lied about multiple things <laughs> in that whole thing. <laughs> Stories fabricated. How awesome is that, dude? How awesome. Lied by omission about the cuddling. How awesome is it that she lied by faking that screenshot and saying that someone else sent it? How epic is that? Wait, dude? So what's the story about the screenshot? You didn't see the screenshot? Like, well, who, well, she claimed. Yeah, no, no, but I'm saying who the f did it come from? Who f knows? It probably her. Who knows? No shot. That would be wild. I mean, I wouldn't be that surprised. Given she lied about the other thing, would it be that crazy? Yes. I don't know. That I would, she would I, fake I a shocked. text message that he could check to see if it was ever sent? I wouldn't be shocked. He didn't even check initially is the thing. They're so stupid. They didn't even check. They just apologized initially. And then later they were like, oh, wait, we can actually call this person to see if that message was real. <laughs> like, who knows? Who, with how stupid these people are, they can get away with anything. She played 5D chess. I'm starting to think that other guy that we talked to, maybe it was real. <laughs> dude, I, uh, dude, that was such a mind f I can't deal with that anymore. And then it got clipped and everyone in the comments, you can see them slowly go from thinking he's real to being like, oh, wait. He mind -raped. Wait, do you think, did that guy, um, wait, is George like, do you think, or? No, he's fine. This is the thing, like, this, the interest in this drama is only on Twitter. Based on, a, okay, a YouTuber with 3 million subs. Did he get, like, removed from, like, some Mr. Beast fucking Instagram picture? I, I mean, he, he did, but he's still got his career, right? He's still got his Minecraft career. He'll still be able to make money. He's still got, you know, dream friend or whatever. He's still got connections. I mean, think about it this way. Like, okay, YouTuber with 3 million subs make, makes a response to allegations. How many views do you think that would get? Probably a lot, right? Maybe, yeah. Like, I would expect it to get, like, at least a million views, right? If somebody's being accused of... I mean, in the past, like, YouTubers who respond to allegations get, like, millions of views. Like, when this guy, Quite, who had, like, a million subs maybe responded to allegations, the video got 5 million views and everyone on YouTube was talking about it, right? So you would think that it would be, like, a huge subject. But this only exists... Well, so maybe people really don't. This only exists in the microcosm of Twitter. George's response hasn't even cracked 300k views in a day. He's got millions of subs. Nobody outside of Twitter actually cares or believes this girl. It's all just Twitter-like farming. Nobody on YouTube actually cares. Nobody with an audience apparently cares. And if he's so wrong, why haven't all these people responded? Why haven't why haven't all of her supporters done videos reacting, being like, you're a piece of sh Like, what could be the possible reason for that? For why people are responding that way? For why people aren't responding. Oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's just like a Twitter thing. I think it literally is. I mean, nobody from her camp has even said almost anything about the response. All the people who supported her in the allegations haven't said sh It make, really makes you think, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, well, that whole group should go down. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. Like, anybody that was involved in that, that's pretty unbelievable. Well, unfortunately, we don't know who was involved apart from the troll who made up the f freshly 18 One line. thing that, um, <laughs> there was a Dr. K video where he's on something called like the million dollar CEO or some CEO, I don't fucking know, some YouTube channel. But uh, an interesting thing he brings up is that the way that women tend to navigate their feelings when they're upset is through like sadness or crying or tears. And men are more predisposed to navigate through like anger or outbursts or whatever. It's very annoying that if somebody is like crying, they're basically impossible to attack. Yeah, right. Like, because people that see girl, girl video, crying and it's like, oh, yeah. poor baby. Like she should probably, she should probably have her entire career destroyed, right? She probably shouldn't be allowed back in without yeah. like a huge, like redemptive, there needs to be like a, yeah. Because like, imagine if this would have gone any other way for the George suit, if it would have picked up traction, if it would have gotten like super canceled, like, do you think these guys are going to come out and apologize or undo it? No, no, absolutely not. But the thing is like, it's not like she had a huge career in the first place. Like, I mean, she had a little bit of one, but if you check her YouTube channel with like 100K sub, she was averaging like 10K views a video, barely yeah, even I uploading. But it's not, it's not about how big it is, just like the principle of it. Like that's just yeah. unbelievable. I mean, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, ultimately the people who do see that and are actually big creators are probably going to see it and be like, this person, you know, this is retarded. The people who delusionally fall into the trap of thinking she's right, they'll probably get falsely accused themselves at some point. <laughs> and honestly, they deserve it. Good for them. I hope yeah, their I careers it. get burned to the ground. It also, like, unironically plays into the as stupid as this 
meme is, but like the whole thing of like not taking them seriously. Like when you get like these many joking allegations that come out and like the girl again in her speech, she's literally using the language of victims. Like I couldn't right. wash myself to clean this off my body. Like this is like, she, I would be Who told her to write that, this. man? Who told yeah, her to exactly. Write that? It's like unreal. Like it's an actual joke. Yeah. But well, I'm what I'm curious about is who are the people behind the scenes and will we ever know? Because I mean, not to take the responsibility off of her because she she is responsible. Obviously, she published the allegation. She's a legal adult. You know, she should be criticized. But there had to be people behind the scenes talking to her about this who like okay the allegation for sure. or one hundred percent or helped write parts of it. Right, like back with the John Swan thing that you covered a long time ago. Remember when yeah. John was like like oh, I had no involvement, and then you go to the Google Doc edit history and he edited half mm -hmm. of it. Who edited half of this to make it sound more extreme? You know. Yeah, they shop these around for sure, and they get like feedback and stuff before they publish everything. One hundred percent. And it makes—I mean, to an extent, that makes sense. I mean, I shop around videos sometimes to see, like, hey, does this sound right? Does this sound good? Like, does this uh -huh. make sense? I do the same with my manifestos. Yeah. 100%, yeah. yeah. So, who the f were these people? Will we ever find out? Maybe not. Uh, maybe you can just assume from whoever is an irrelevant f loser who's constantly tweeting about it. They probably did like the <laughs> the Ryan guy, the Ryan guy that you did like the mm -hmm. Midwest emo thing. That guy probably had some involvement, if I had to guess. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but it's uh, it sucks, and especially sucks that you know, not to pull the age card too much. But these people are all so young. Like making an allegation like this is publicized forever now, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I mean, probably deserve to get their careers tanked. But Jesus Christ, dude, it sucks. What have you been yeah. up to, buddy? What's going on in your world? Uh, nothing much. Just work, work, work. Work, work, work. Well, working on what? Working on Norman Finkelstein. I saw a picture of you kissing him. I was kind of, you know, put off by that. Um, no, I think uh, I wanted to stream a lot this month because I was traveling so much last month. And then, who knows? I've got I did a little bit of college research today. Tomorrow we're gonna start on immigration, just really politics. Wait for the next big story to break, and then go from there. You know. Nice. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for chatting. Have a good one. I love you. Bye. See ya. All right. Good little chat there. Is that a skibbity toilet I see? I want to see Boogie Exposed, Tipster. After all of this Gamergate stuff started popping off, <laughs> I decided to have a little fun on Twitter with uh, this tweet here. And a lot of people have asked me, do I stand by this tweet? And the answer is yes. Video games should be fun. They shouldn't be political lectures of pretty much any type. And whereas almost any sane person should agree with this tweet, a lot of people got hung up with the last couple of words. And most of the replies were just a good time, except replies from one person, and that is Tipster. And that sucks because I normally <laughs> abide by the fat guy code where fat guys tend to leave other fat guys alone if we can. But it's already with a self-deprecating, like just can't get through one minute of a video without <laughs> talking about how he sucks and reasons he should drink Gatorade and your mom. Like what, why, why, why does he constantly have to self-deprecate it? To, just so annoying. Just a little peeve of mine, but... I called him out for this on Kick or Keep, too, like, just the constant. As soon as he gets into anything, it's like, hey, guys, I'm a fat, broke loser. But that being said, in the opinion of a fat, broke loser, like, dude. Tipster drew first blood, and I'm going Rambo on his ass. They going first Rambo. Blood, not me. Tipster saw my video <laughs> talking about Sweet BB Incorporated and decided to post some clips from it, basically saying that I was now on the alt-right grift. And I wonder why someone like Tipster would think that of me. Well, it's classic projection. And if you watch this video by Turkey Tom, uh, which I'm going to highlight chunks of here, but also... <laughs> Yo, base. Below, you'll get an idea of the type of person that Tipster is. Specifically, Tipster is someone who tried to be a video game YouTuber and failed at that, then joined the commentary community and got kicked out of that community. So now instead he grifts the Rainbow Coalition and is also failing to do that. Now, the reason I'm making... I like how he's like actually spot on about Tipster. Like the funniest thing about Tipster and someone like him, and I've seen multiple people like this, is uh, they never really wanted a career, it seems. They never really even wanted to be successful at making content because they've never really applied themselves. It's never been that good. They never improved. Like over the past like five, six years that I've known about Tipster, his content has never changed. He's never really innovated anything. They just want to be a part of a community. They want a sense of social belonging. And that's why, like, Tipster, not to say if you have a day job, you can't, you know, do YouTube. But he's never really seemed like someone who wanted to make it as a full-timer. He just wanted, I think, the community interaction, the community presence. And an example of this I have from back in the day is, like, at one point, Tipster uh, defended me quite a bit over the D'Angelo Wallace situation. And there's this video of him, like, vaping in his car talking about it. And during this point in time... He had tweeted out something to the effect of like, you know, I used to not get along with Tom too much, but I think he's actually a good guy and we've become great friends. And I found that very interesting because I never really, I, I wasn't really friends with Tipster. Augie kind of was, Nick 
kind of was a little bit. Bolax kind of was, but like not really. And they were they were like way better friends with him than me. And they weren't were barely friends with him at all. I I talked to Tipster in total probably like three times in private ever. And it was never like about like personal stuff. It was just like, here's this drama, here's this drama, here's this drama. But despite that, he like had this impression that we were like friends. And I think that clued me into the fact that I think the entire reason for him being online is just pure social validation. And part of that is from part of that is from like guys and like wanting, you know, a male friend group. But realistic realistically, the entire motivation for him is just social validation from guys for having all my friend group and then social validation from women. And when real women stopped giving him validation and they determined he was creepy, he moved on to uh, <laughs> trans women. Not that they're not real women, but he moved on to, you know, chicks with dicks, basically, was his next move. And that's the reason why he hangs around Keppels. He's just hoping that he will someday finally get a taste of, okay, a taste of any. He, and he's really indiscriminate about it this one. He doesn't really care where it's from. It doesn't matter. You know, what's up, DGGers? In this video is to talk about this live stream where Tipster had to go live last night for 45 minutes to talk about what an anti-woke uh, grifter he thinks I've become. Spoiler alert, I'm no grifter. I just think sometimes <laughs> it's right to call out bad people for doing bad things. And if I'm in the... I mean, Boogie's... I, is he a grifter? I don't think he's a grifter. I just don't think he has real opinions because he's, he's too scared to have one. Sometimes he does have a real thought, seemingly, but then he just backs down to the mob <laughs> and instantly fences. this. And this is one of the problems I had with Boogie back in the day and one of the problems many people have with Boogie. Any position you would, you would challenge him on, he would instantly be like, oh, actually, the other side is true. Like back in the day, he said that like you should be jailed if you harass a trans woman and his evidence for harassing a trans woman was like, or his, his instance was like misgendering someone. He was like, yeah, you should probably go to jail. He was like, that's retarded, dude. And everybody said that. And he was like, okay, well, maybe I'm wrong, actually. And then people were like, well, wait, you came up with a super strong position in the other favor. So which one do you actually think? Like have some conviction. And then he was like, okay, well, maybe you should go to jail. And it was just this constant back and forth. And that's how it's always been with Boogie, right? Literally how it's always been every single day of his life. Uh... I don't know if that comes from trauma from childhood or something, but it definitely makes him frustrating as like a commentator or whatever. And it's very interesting that it turned out that way because back in the day, Tipster, was, or sorry, back in the day, Boogie was taken quite seriously on YouTube. Like he was actually a guy people would turn to for like their opinion on drama, you know? I don't know if you guys remember, but back in the day, he would consistently get like 500,000 to a million views just weighing in on drama. Whether it was Gamergate or YouTube drama or, you know, current events in gaming, like he would get a lot of views off of just talking about whatever was going on. And people looked at him as like a voice of reason. And then I think his Twitter basically got him into trouble because people realized he had no actual conviction and was willing to just back off of any position if he thought it might get him in sh right? Because he was just too scared. Company of people like Asmon Gold, while I'm doing it, I feel pretty comfortable doing it. So I just wanted to highlight some of the things that uh, Tipster had to say <laughs> in this live stream and give my opinion. So he's saying like Alan Wake 2, God of War, Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2. He's saying these games were too big to fail. <sighs> but then he's talking about how like Suicide Squad was a stinker, which... I actually, it, I hear it is a pretty bad game. I don't know, Tipster. What do you think Spider-Man 2, Alan Wake 2, and God of War 2 have in common? It's the number two. Those video games are sequels to very well-loved <laughs> games that had very little politics in them and a shitload of fun. The industry knows that's a really good time to shove politics down your throat. Fat on fat violence, scary time to be alive. It is, dude. Friendly fire. Okay, so it's a good time to get you to sit down and listen to a lecture. Who's this is literally just about <laughs> being treated poorly by Anidia Sarkeesian uh, 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 at VidCon. Panelists. So he was speaking out against like gamer gators at the time, right? And now he's decided he wants to join them. I don't know. I always felt I beat Anita Sarkeesian there because I got invited back to VidCon the next year and uh, she didn't. Also, I'm dating I feel like I still have girl, the bowl and on my Anita just celebrated her birthday party by having a fake wedding. So I... I feel like I'm winning. And no, that panel wasn't. I'm, dude. Ugh. I mean, compared to Anita, are you winning? Probably not, even because she probably has a bunch of money. Who knows from where? Freaking skibbity toilet empire paid her off to talk about Gamergate and say Hitman was sexist or whatever. But she definitely is has money. <laughs> you shouldn't be. If you're if you're if you're a boogie, you shouldn't be. Uh, you shouldn't be claiming your life is like good. Like, come on. I mean. At least he's not self-deprecating. At least there's that. Dating his dream girl. Man. It wasn't about Gamergate. It was about online harassment, which can come from people on the right <laughs> or the left or even the middle. And if Gamergate 2.0 comes out to being some sort of harassment campaign, I will distance myself from the harassment. But I'll still say the video games are supposed to be fun. Liking fun video games and thinking they shouldn't be taken over by identity politics isn't harassment. <laughs> You have to be an extra kind of stupid to think that I'm aligning myself with terrorists just because I'm sharing that opinion.
Hey guys, it's me, Francis. And True. you know, last time this Gamergate thing happened all those years ago, I'm going to side with all the racists and the Nazis and stuff like that. Because Bays. they seem to think I'm a really cool guy. Bays. I don't even know where to start with that, other than the fact that he genuinely thought he was doing something there. And it's really great that he he's that. He thought he was doing something? Why is Boogie adopting, like, Twitter slay language. You guys know what I mean? You guys have seen these people. Like, there's like a kind of Twitter. They're like, you really thought you did something. Why is why is Boogie talking like that? What's going on? Is Boogie balking? He's doing a dirty balk, yes. He's engaged in a very dirty balk. It is nice to see him just admitting that he thinks that if you like fun video games and you don't want to be pandered to in those games, uh, that you are a racist and a Nazi. And it's just, it's awesome to see him own that. Anybody who knows me in my audience knows that I do not overused terms like you know racists and nazis racists and the nazis and by now you all know these are just buzzwords they use when they don't have isn't the anything. isn't the francis video just like an old parody video anyway <laughs> like isn't that clearly like an old parody video he made like 15 years ago i mean the francis thing was a character right it was just like a fat neck beard character who was playing not that he was that different in real life but it was like a you know an exaggeration is Stifter just, just flat out lying, saying that he said this genuinely? Valid argument against the fact that video games should be fun. These people just do not understand that video games for us is a form of escapism to escape <laughs> real world politics. And we're not here to pay $70 to be lectured to. Uh, what games are they talking about? Because I don't, I don't really know a lot about this whole Gamergate 2 thing or whatever. Like, What, what games had like the woke shit in them? Is it like The Last of Us 2? Is that the one with like the ugly girl or whatever like what what are the what are like the the games with identity politics shoved down people's throats because i don't even discount that it's happening i just don't play video games apart from fortnite which uh is based in red pill so i have no problem with that mass effect 3 what was in mass effect 3 spider-man 2 what was in spider-man 2 what was the what was the woke garbage in those games i'm, I'm not really privy to that i don't really know horizon zero two <laughs> Suicide Squad, Spider-Man 2, etc. What was happening in those games? Are these successful games or did they flop? Like, what, what was the perception like publicly around these games? Saints Row reboot? Was it... What was the shit in it? It's about Sweet Baby Inc. Well, I know there's, like, a consulting firm called Sweet Baby Inc. that was, like, working on these games and, like, supposedly making them more woke. I just don't know what specifically they were doing. This isn't even, like, a uh, facetious question. Like, they were doing nothing. It's not that. I'm just... I don't know, you know? I, I don't play these games. Spider-Man 2 had MJ as a slay queen and other woke sh A slay queen. MJ being the most powerful character. BLM flag and LGBTQ flag in Spider-Man 2. COD females, Battlefield woke sh Have you not played video games instead of Fortnite? What's wrong with you? No, I haven't because I just don't care. When I play games, I play like old games. Like all the games I have back there on that shelf that I play like occasionally, which is, I mean, like literally like twice a year. You know, when I was showing <laughs> my quote to me, right? That's because Boogie couldn't handle my criticism. He couldn't handle the fact that I'm right. Tipster, I block everybody on Twitter almost for no reason. People seem to like it when I do it. They wear it as like a badge of honor. Oh, look, Boogie blocked me. And also, I don't have to deal with their bullshit. But Tipster, that's not why I blocked <laughs> you. I blocked you because you were a disgusting, depraved human being. It Whoa. was just last month that you Going were defending off. drawn photos of child and that just irks me in the worst way humanly possible. Your only online friend left is Keffels, and she threw you under the bus because you were defending child uh, I may not be Mr. Rogers, but at least I don't that have bad a the history game? of both harassing online e-girls as well as online trans women. You call me a grifter because I broke my silence on this whole video game. Boogie's really going in here. You're I didn't expect this. The commentary community to go I didn't expect any major pushback on... Uh on tipster stuff or going deep. Maybe he actually watched my whole video. I mean, in fairness, I, I don't know if I would constitute a lot of what he did as harassment. It's more just like being weird and I don't know, kind of creepy, I guess. I mean, some of the comments about the 16 year old e-girl or whatever, he was like, your friend is cute. I mean, that's weird, but I don't know if I'd say it's harassment. I mean, he didn't really know their age. I don't think it's responsible to call him file. Not that Boogie did that. It seems like to me, tipster was just like really desperate and horny and kind of a degenerate and, I don't know, his wife isn't putting out or something, so there's some problem there, which kind of sucks. I mean, in that way, I kind of feel bad for him, but, <laughs> I mean, realistically, dude, you just got to, uh, you got to get off, got to get off Twitter with that, shit, you know? 
take it to Instagram or just wait for girls to reach out to you. You know, instead of trying to reach out to them and be the Riz God. You want to warn me about Ethan's online got owned again? I recorded a video about that. It's coming out this week. You know what? It's not I know all I'm about it. I just want to align myself with people who like video games. And there's plenty of people on the left who <laughs> do that. But you're choosing to ally yourself with the left and only the left, excluding anybody that happens to be in the middle or the right. Uh, top That's shelf a really bad sure. plan for you. The reason you're failing at everything you're trying to do right now is because you're trying to appeal to the left, but you're such a vile, disgusting person that even they <laughs> don't want to have anything to True. do with you. Regurgitating the left talking Honestly, points real. can only get you so far. And when somebody on the left finds out that you harass women or defend child they don't want to have anything to do with you. Whoa. I'm not here to talk about the left or the Dude's right going or off. anything in the middle. I'm just talking about video games and people being informed whether or not a certain company worked on it so they can choose whether or not to spend their hard-earned money on that. And why is that difficult for you to understand? Because, Tipster, it's exactly people like you that I'm trying to avoid when it comes to video games. People who preach tolerance in one hand and attack everyone they can on the other. And I feel like part of the bigger problem for Tipster is just that he's never been that, like I said, invested in the content. He's in, invested in, like, the social interaction dynamic part of it, which is why he spends all day on Twitter tweeting about, this person said this about Keffles, and this person said this. It's like, dude, just make content, you know? Just make content people want to watch. But he can't do that because he's boring is the real thing. He's just boring. People defending child people harassing women you are the exact kind of person i play video games to get the hell away from and i don't want your politics in my video games and that should be okay i think i'm not trying to appeal to the right or nazis or any of that i'm just speaking what i believe to be true the video game should be fun and i i think it's so sad and sick that you can't see that i don't have problems with anybody on the left or the right Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh my god base dude oh my god oh my god guys dude i fucking won what the f my life is made i feel like we should be talking about why i'm the goat way more right as long as they're not extremists <laughs> and if you're an extremist you can go yourself at the end of the day i'm not trying to appeal to anybody other than the fact that some people like video games and some people want them to remain fun and if you're an extremist go f yourself and if you're not an extremist well you can come join that and let's play some video games together hell divers 2 is pretty good and the new final fantasy has been really great so far <laughs> okay dude so tipster now i'm done with you and i'm going to go back to blocking you because i don't want you accidentally <laughs> retweeting lolly onto my time <laughs> you've done that you've done that and i don't want to see it i accident, rarely dude? choose to make videos like this i rarely choose to respond and when i do i always try to keep some decorum but you deserve none of it you are down to the last shred of internet dignity that you had left and that person's name was keffels and even she can't stand you anymore i'm done with you too base dude so true damn well that's a pretty good video from boogie i mean all things considered i mean he didn't get any information wrong as far as i could tell uh definitely got tipster i don't know how passionate he actually is about this shit. it's hard to tell sometimes but uh you know he shouted out turkey time listen if you shout me out I, all all criticism is forgiven you're automatically based you're automatically in the base department okay hello base department they just called boogie 2988 and pumped him full of red-blooded kekistani warrior blood and now he's base and he's on phonum grave taxing the phantom so that was good to see i enjoyed that honestly good job dude all right well now we've got this video from kevils where she defends wash i guess dude i hate this person's psychomotor whatever voice i i hate listening to this but i'll do it for the content okay i'll do anything for the content i'll suffer through it all right Fine. Hello, everyone. I recently uploaded a video called I Changed My Mind About Vosh, and as you may have noticed, I took the video down. Now, there are many reasons for why I did this. First of all, I think that people got the wrong impression about what I was trying to say, and I didn't want to deal with getting dogpiled on the video. I'm not trying to start a fight with anyone. I'm not trying to continue any sort of drama. I was mostly just trying to give my thoughts in a calm, collective manner retrospectively about everything that happened. So I'm going to try doing the video again. If you see the Minecraft parkour in the background, that is a new addition to the video, and when it's face cam, it's the video that I previously uploaded. I noticed that small channels are already re-uploading my video, and I'm going to assume that people think that I'm trying to hide something, but I'm really not. In philosophy, Occam's razor is the problem-solving principle. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs>
to accept the definition of Occam's razor while making a video about Vosh. Now that is epic. Okay, that's actually the greatest thing Kelpos has done in a while. Imagine if while I was like, I probably have done this before, but I'm gonna call her off for it anyway because get based hypocrisy arc. Uh, imagine like when you're talking about like Vo like Vosh lolly drama or whatever, when you defended him, why you deleted your video, you just without any transition at all, you just bring up like. The the gay parable, the quandary parable, is a quandary where they parabolically place the skibbity and the riz ho like oh hi like what what are you talking about? Why why is this definition here, dude? Occam's razor. Oh my god. Occam's lolly folder. That's a tax folder, you see. That's the that's the CPA folder. Well that recommends searching for explanations constructed with the smallest possible set of elements. So in other words, it's not that I'm some sort of evil mastermind, it's actually that I'm just really stupid. I'm going to elaborate more than I did in the first video to clear up any of the misconceptions <laughs> that people had, because people assumed that this was some sort of takedown video, which it absolutely wasn't. Also, it goes without saying, please don't harass these small channels that are re-uploading my content without permission. It's annoying, but I honestly don't care that much. I want to do my little commentary, I want to have a good time, and I want everyone watching this to also have a good Done with drama videos, by the way. Done with drama videos. And now she's like putting on this like fake positivity arc with like the happy uplifting music. Like, guys, I just want to have fun and make my little videos and be silly on the internet. Like two years ago, you were an internet terrorist. And now it's like, guys, just leave me alone. Like, you know, I contributed some hurt in the past, but now I just want to do the right thing. Now I just want to like hang out and have fun. And like, you know, I just want to be happy and make videos and make people happy. Like, no, you don't get to just get away that quick. Look at what you did. You reap what you so you'll be irrelevant online forever and the only relevance that you will have is people on you i love seeing willie mack get like hundreds of thousands of views on this person just absolutely destroying them annihilating them with facts and logic and this person can barely break 20k views embarrassing so let's get into it i wanted to give my thoughts about everything now the time has passed and i kind of stepped away for a bit to think about everything that happened what is the, the mu what year. is this i can't get over the music what is this why did you choose this music it's like unsettling like because you can tell she's depressed but it's like fake positivity like just put the doomer nightwave radio on okay put on the put on after dark by mr kitty or something you don't you don't need whatever this is as the hours pass i will let you know i'm alone just put that on dude months Something i'm talking cringe. of course about the situation that went down with bosch so to those who aren't aware the situation that happened in february was bosch was... accidentally leaked a folder full of images that he should not have had on his computer. Uh, okay, wait, why is she why is she walking it back now? She was literally just defending him being like, "Well, Chris Tyson likes Lolly, so it's fine." Why is she, he shouldn't have had it on his computer? Should he have not had it cuz he got caught or should he have not ha not had it cuz it's like weird? Like which one? How deep are we going into the short stack goblin allegations here? I need to know. Would Keffels qualify as a short stack goblin? Certainly a certainly a goblinoid creature, certainly some type of mythical beast, maybe an orc. I could I could see an orc type thing going on. Not because of her appearance, but because of her behavior, to be to be clear, okay? Because of her behavior. She, she has orc-like behavior. Her face is a shining visage of health and prosperity. Now, when I originally uploaded this video, I had a lot of people in the comments saying that I was victim-blaming him, but I 100% Victim-blaming Vosh? Who was saying you were victim-blaming Vosh? Is he a victim? What is he a victim of? Wait, okay, wh who is saying that? Your response to the allegations is to respond to people who think you didn't go far enough with defending him, not the people who thought you went too far with defending him? Was it one person? Victim blaming? How is he a victim? He just had weird on his computer and people found it. Like, or rather, he found it himself. George not found. Vosh is found. He found the lolly folder. What is what is going on? What kind of response? I've Kevl is constantly surprises me with her uh, psychomotorness. I've I've almost never seen someone this intelligent and genius on the internet. You're so skibbity. You're so phantom tax. I just want to be your Kefals. That this was entirely avoidable if he just decided to not goon at his streaming computer and buy a laptop or a phone. You know, this this was all on him. This is this is boomer tier behavior, to be honest. A lot of people said that <laughs> I needlessly behavior. inserted myself into all of that drama that happened and I want to talk about that because I partially agree, but there's also a different side of this that people probably weren't aware of. I saw all of this playing out. I wasn't planning on weighing in. None of this was my problem. But then my friend Tipster decided to call out Ethan Klein. <laughs> I love I love I love that the group of people is like Vosh, Kevels, and Tipster. This is like the intellectual roundtable here. This is the 
This is the knights in shining armor we're dealing with. The geniuses over here, okay? I love that. Like, I, I couldn't imagine a better friend group. Imagine you walk into, like, a, a, a get-together, a party, okay? A hangout. And these are the people hanging out, passing the blunt around. That is, that, that, that is extremely dark, okay? That is an extremely dark reality that you may have to live with, okay? So just be careful if you're in Tacoma, Washington. Be very careful, okay? You never know. You never know what's going to happen. The intellectual dark web. The intellectual lolly web. The intellectual giving hormones to children web. Based. Twitter for how he covered the entire situation that happened with Bob. I can't get over the music. What is this music? What is this like? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Is this like Pokemon? Like starting screen music? What is what is this? Why is this music being? Does this fit? What troglodyte gave her this music and was like, this is good. You should use this. When Ethan Klein responded, I was like, OK, I have two friends now who are getting put on blast by a really large content creator, I decided that I was going to, I was going to get into the mud because I care about my friends. I don't want to see my friends getting attacked. <laughs> that was a huge yeah. mistake. Yeah, now, when I yeah, say that it was yeah, a mistake, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that I regret doing it. I stand by everything that I said during all of that drama. I don't think Vosh is, is the word that's probably going to get this video demonetized, which I'm not going to say it because I like money. I think that Vosh is a good person. I just think that he was uh, incredibly careless and that this was an avoidable situation. Yeah. Yeah. Hindsight is twenty twenty. If I could he's an go back, incredibly good person. Vosh is an incredibly good person. Back and just let everything. He's such a good person. It. It's incredible. You wouldn't believe it. It's unbelievable. Oh, without getting involved, obviously I would have. And I don't want to beat myself up that much because I think that mm -hmm. my instinct to want to protect my friends when I see them getting attacked is a good one. Like it shows that I really care about people, caring about people, and wanting to protect people. Sometimes that's not always the greatest idea. Now it goes without saying, I'm not willing to defend people when I think that they legitimately are doing bad things. In the situation with Vosh, the reason that I defended him is because I believed him when he said that this entire situation uh. was an accident. A really unfortunate accident, but an accident nonetheless. If evidence were- uh. So you're defending him because it's an accident and not because he had the lolly? The problem is that it's an accident. The problem isn't that he had it. Like if it was if it was intentional, it would have been a bigger deal, but because he accidentally revealed it, it's, it's not that bad. If he had intentionally brought it up on stream, then it's like, well, hey man, what's going on, big guy? But because it was an accident, then it's fine. Like, what are these defenses? Does she even hear herself? Does she write this out or does she just talk off the cuff after waking up from taking crack or whatever she takes these days? What is going on here? Were to come out that he lied about that and that this was a situation where he knowingly went out of his way to find those images, I would be absolutely furious. I mean, he, and he did. Like, how do you think he got those on his computer? Did his assistant download them? Did his hot assistant download them? Or did he put them on his computer intentionally because he likes them? Like, what, what is it? What is he? What is this defense? If it was a situation where he went out of his way to find those images, it would be fine. But because, or, or sorry, it would be bad. But because he intentionally found them, it's like what? It's good. Like what are you? What are you talking about? What are you saying? Is this a real person? Like what? What is going on? And this entire situation has kind Accidental of made me reevaluate how I even feel about Vosh in the first place. To be completely <laughs> honest, I don't really like him as much as I used to. I actually feel hurt and let down by him. I think me saying this might have been where people decided to start getting annoyed with me for saying all of the things. Is, is that where people started to get annoyed? Is that really why people started to get annoyed? Or are you just addressing the like one person who still watches your content for you? Is that the real problem? What are the comments like here? Oh, Tipster says, I love you too, friend. I can admit mistakes were made in my approach to the situation, and I'm genuinely sorry for the way things played out. I think it's definitely been a huge learning experience. As always, I always have your back. Hope you're taking care of yourself, buddy. This is dark. <laughs> Bruh. Bro. <laughs> That's epic things that I said in this video. So let me elaborate a bit more on what I meant by this. My intention here isn't that I'm trying to join the secret bread tube clique. I'm not going to be going Noah <laughs> Samson Vosh effect right now. I'm just honestly saying that given the way that this situation played out, it does hurt because the allegations against Vosh have been going on for years. The fact that he didn't Please. take precautions to avoid this situation happening is completely reckless. Wait, so then why did you defend him in the first place if it's all his fault? that it came out like why why even make the defense and why are you personally hurt that he was consistent with himself like he's been consistent like i'm a degenerate freak i'm a weirdo i'm a creep and then he turned out to be a degenerate weirdo like what, what did you expect really like what is the problem there was the problem that he used to
a lolly and then he had it in a, on his computer. Like, what, I just don't understand. I'm having a very hard time here understanding what the issue is, honestly. Does she even know why she's mad? Or does she even know why she's making this video? Or does she just need like $50 real quick and that's why she made it? I really don't understand. Does she know why she made this video? Why is there happy music? How am I only five minutes into this video? How am I five minutes in? I feel like it should be over. And I expected more of him because he seems to always be a person who thinks about <laughs> what they're doing and does everything with clear intention. Oh, and I always really yeah. admired that quality in him because that is not a quality I have. I am an incredibly impulsive person and I have been basically my entire life. I am on the maximum Adderall dosage that is recommended for health reasons and my doctor still ranks me as needing improvement with my ADHD. My silly brain knows no bounds. It was- I'm just silly guys, I'm just a silly person who donated to a website that you know sends children hormones against their parents well i'm just silly you see i was just i was that was me being silly me being serious is when i defended the lolly but me being silly is is when i is when i did that this person is making my tourette's act up i'm twitching the f out i can't stand this Sweet Sweet Cocaine base, dude, actually so base. People don't even understand. Such an avoidable mistake. This is me being as charitable as possible, believing him when he said that he downloaded <laughs> Wally by mistake. Even if that was 100% true, he could have avoided this. He didn't need to download on his work computer. That's just bizarre. I wonder what is on Keffels' computer. Because I bet Keffels has like 12 computers. Do you think it's like one for each type of... Like one is short stack goblin, one is horses, one is uh some other dark stuff maybe. Like who knows what's going on on her on her folders? I don't even want to dream of it. It's probably something not not too good. Can this person's career just die already? I guess it is kind of dead. I'm just kind of dancing on the grave. But can I just stop hearing from them? We and he do not look in the bathtub folder. So True. many people, people whose livelihoods actually depend on him in the crosshairs because of how reckless he is. To be fair to Vosh, he did apologize <laughs> to his entire community. And I think that his apology was sincere. Look, first of all, I, I want to apologize for making it so difficult to be a fan of mine uh, and a member of my community. Uh, seriously, I'm sorry. Uh, in this respect, at least, you know, I, I, I think I've let you guys down. I think this is a, a great community. You know, exceptional, even. And Whoa. as a consequence of my obstinance and carelessness and uh, stupid f debate bro hypotheticals, many of you have been ostracized from other online communities or, or, or harassed on my behalf. The content of this channel oh, no. and my messaging is unambiguously progressive and inclusive and good-spirited, <laughs> you know? It's... That, that, that might not be the popular conception of me and my content, but it remains true nevertheless. None of the people who enjoy my- What about it is good spirit? It was a good spirit when you like <laughs> lied about destiny repeatedly over and over. I mean, I hate to simp a little bit, but like that is what you do. Like you just lie about people who you don't like. When you constantly misrepresent other people and their viewpoints. Was that the good spirited stuff? Like where, where was the good spirited? I want to know where the good spirited allegations are coming from because I've never- even heard him say this. He's just a drama farmer like everyone else. He posts uninformed political takes all day. What about that is like positive? My content for those reasons expected, I imagine, to be pushed out of other communities. This is like, imagine if I made a video and I was like, guys, you know, at the end of the day, all my content does is help the world. And that's all I want to do. I just want to help everyone. You know, I do it for charity. Like we have an amazing community here. I'm so proud of this community. Like, what, what are you talking about? What are you proud of? I don't understand. Where is the where is the charitable Bosch content coming from? You know, with you similar me, values uh, because they were a part of mine because of me and my reputation. And honestly, the only thing that I'm saying is that he genuinely made mistakes, and those mistakes hurt other people. He admits that he made mistakes, and up until now, I have not actually said anything about how I felt because I didn't want to show my own frustrations with him while he was under such a magnifying glass. And this entire situation just really soured me to even wanting to be part of his community, to be quite honest, because if he cared as wow. much as he claimed, 
he would have taken more precaution with his actions to not have a situation like this blow up. And for people who were his friends and for people who wanted to defend him through this, they just got mercilessly dragged. Why is this NPC so well, he mad stayed me? silent. Oh, this is an actual him. person. Now, for the record, Vosh absolutely did the right thing by staying quiet. Him speaking up during all of this, even him defending me during all of this, it would have had the exact opposite effect. What he did was the best thing that he could have done in that situation. And the only reason that I feel comfortable talking about it is because people have more or less moved on. And now he's moving on and people are still giving me oh, hate, shit, not for right. my own actions, but for his. They're redirecting the hate onto me. Well, he's in his fortress it. and hasn't yeah. even tweeted on his Twitter since like February 18th. I want to clarify on this point as well that I absolutely do do things to fortress. rile people yeah, up. Sometimes hiding. intentionally, most of the time completely unintentionally. I feel like sometimes I just Fucking have coward. way too of an emotional reaction to things. And I'm always <laughs> trying to step back and to think about what I'm going to say before I say it, which is part of the reason why I'm not live streaming as much anymore. And I'm doing wow. these videos where I have the time to actually sit back and think about what I want to say before I put my thoughts out to everyone. But I feel like saying that, oh, I just get hate for no reason, or oh, I just get hate because I'm trans is deflecting from the fact that I very obviously do things to instigate the reason why people are mad at me. Like for instance, I again, well, never true. needed to get involved <laughs> in any of this drama, but for I did. Once, and because I did, I had to face the consequences of that. You can't just walk into an active war zone and then complain that you got shot knowing that you just walked into an active war zone. That's ridiculous. All of the lies True. and misinformation about me that started that on ridiculous. Kiwi Farms that no, culminated in the entirety of the events oh of 2022 God. got brought Still back to life shit. as a result of this situation because I wanted to defend my friend. I don't think if the roles were reversed he would do the same for me so first of all i want to address the very end portion of this i just i have such a hard time understanding why now she's admitting like okay on one hand i'll make the concession yes it's my fault i get criticism it's my fault all this is happening to me but at the same time like guys like i'm just like a good you know i just i just defended my friend like kiwi farms it was kiwi farms's fault guys somehow somehow it's their fault always is it really kiwi farms or is it because you're because you made a bunch of dumb decisions and lied about a GoFundMe. Like, which which one really is it? Which one do we really want to admit that it is? Because it's definitely not, uh, it's definitely not some of them. We are a couple's introspection. Well, when she does introspect, it always has to go back to like, well, what's actually Kiwi Farms though? So it's it's just a farce, right? It always has to be like, oh, well, you know, I admit I made mistakes, so but at the end of the day, the real mistake makers are Kiwi Farms. The real mistake makers are the site that documents me that I'm mad about. Is that really the problem? <laughs> Lotan just to say it. <laughs> Nincompoop. There you go, dude. I said it. This is a failed politician for the Canadian Communist Party. She was swatted by one online group and then lied about it being another bigger, more popular site. Kiwi Farms is an <laughs> online community of stalkers that torment and harass their victims so intensely. We did it. We actually did it. So many people have tried for so long to do this, and we actually got Kiwi Farms down. Can I just say before we get into this, Willie Mac has easily made like some of the best commentary slash drama slash whatever you want to call them videos over the past few years. I mean, some of them dip into straight up just journalism, just like going over the Andrew Tate stuff and showing like that lawsuit with the underage girls and everything. Like this guy is just the goat. I don't, I don't think there's anyone really comparing to him right now. I mean, I guess Nicholas Diorio, but he doesn't upload as often, you know, but when he drops it is fire. But Willie's like consistently hitting like fire videos every... I feel like twice a month he's, he's getting one of these bangers out. I don't know. It's hard to compete. It's hard to compete with the production he's putting in. It's not bad. Not bad at all. The website would never be shut down. She would cry. <laughs> lie. We need Whoa. as many people as possible to know who they are if we plan to fight back against them. That's why I need every single person who has watched this video to share the video and to spread the word. Later admitting to baiting them into doxing her <laughs> so she could get even more publicity. And my little ragtag team were able to force their hand by intentionally making myself a lightning rod so I could make Kiwi- Does I'm a genius. I intentionally got myself doxed. I was so mad about them not doxing me that I intentionally got myself doxed so that journalists would be mad about it and reach out to Cloudflare. Genius, dude. Genius. I guess it did work for the time being, but uh, I mean, Kiwi Farms is still up right now. 
Seems like they can't be stopped. Every time that site goes down, it just gets back up within a matter of, you know, weeks to months or whatever. Farms. Kiwi Farms is not shut down now. And attack me to the point where Cladflare had no choice. <laughs> because every time they attacked me, I publicized it. And Kiwi Farms wouldn't even be the culprit. I covered this story nearly two years ago. Literally bragging about crying wolf. Documents. And it's clear to me that what she has written in there does not at Good all question, line Allison. up with reality. This video will paint Something a fuller base. picture. This is how an activist scammed her movement. There's a lot of people in my audience that look up to me. I don't want to let them down. To end this story, we need to go back to the past. Pebbles is swatted August 5th, 2022. This is partly because she's trans and people after her are insanely bigoted and partly because she's insufferable. You will understand later. These people sent an email impersonating Keppels using her dead name, <laughs> saying she killed her transphobic mom and plans to kill every cisgendered person at City Hall. Keppels uploaded- Did they ever find who did that, by the way? To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if she herself did it, but I'm just curious who actually sent that email, if anyone. Because it seems like something she would do. Imagine if in a few years we found out that like she was the one who sent that email. I honestly wouldn't even be shocked. Dead name reveals the prejudice that many the funny part about that is she was already booked out of her dead name because <laughs> of a prior charge and that's why she was booked that way and also like it reveals the prejudice look at her glazed over retarded eyes in this video it's so funny i bet she was high when she recorded it oh man looking back over all this stuff is so funny we need to get articles about like the washington post about this loser maybe now that willie matt covered it and like did the best possible way he didn't didn't call her you know, any mean name is maybe they'll actually start covering it or something. You never know. But uh, yeah, extreme. I hate watching these old Keffels videos. Extreme cringe, dude. I was going to do a video about Keffels and uh, we'll see how Willie's does. Maybe I'll still do it, but it seems like his is doing pretty good. It's probably getting a lot of message out there. Look at all the barrel pointing to my face. Yeah police have towards trans literally didn't people. happen she would also claim that the police caused her and her fiance financial harm and that she was opening a gofundme to recoup her losses move <laughs> and any extra money past the goal would be used to sue the police they seized both my personal and work phone as well as the work computer that i broadcast on twitch from because of the negligence of the police we were both left functionally unemployed and i have spent thousands of dollars let's see real you were already basically unemployed you were not a successful streamer like <laughs> you are just unemployed you've been unemployed you should probably start collecting food stamps soon it's gonna get dire or unless the hundred thousand dollars still doesn't run out you can still spend that on pierogies or whatever the f you buy over there placing our computers and cell phones so our lives aren't completely destroyed by what happened to us. The GoFundMe was initially set to $20,000 and she exceeded it immediately, but would suspiciously raise the goal every time it was about to hit it. Now to understand her dishonesty when it comes to the lawsuit, we need to understand her doxing because this is psychotic. Kiwi Farms is famed for their documentation of wall cows. I think the term came from them. Slurs and misgendering run rampant on the website. There's no moderation. I grew up on Xbox Live. I don't really care, but it's definitely not for the faint of heart. It's a degenerate place for degenerate people that love documenting other degenerates, so it's not surprising Keffels would have a thread. Keffels would be targeted and harassed several times, the first one being the email threat to City Hall. This got media coverage and pushed her GoFundMe off the ground. Keffels would try and get away, spending a night at a hotel, posting a picture of her cat letting everyone know she was okay. The doctors then cross-referenced the bed sheets with other hotels in her city to find the one she was staying at. They sent her people- Dude, that reminds me of the, uh, you guys remember the Shia LaBeouf 4chan thing, Internet Story made a video about a long time ago, where they, like, triangulated the position of where he was based on, like, what was it? How did they even get it? Honestly, it was like it was like the flight patterns of planes or something, like the position of the sun. They determined like the time zone it was in, and they determined like where it was exactly. And then someone drove honking a horn around. I, think I just killed a member of Nelk over here in this game. How much money for you to watch the rest of Enter's vid, dude? I want to be honest. I just kind of don't want to watch it. <laughs> Maybe I'll cover it in a video when I can watch it off stream and like half pay attention till the important part, but it's just a lot to watch, man. Like, I just, I don't know. The presentation has to be good for me to enjoy it. I'm a Zoomer, you know? I have TikTok brain. It's hard for me to get into a video. That's why I clicked off the, what was that? The the the, the Scott Schaefer video, because it's just like, I don't know, it just got boring for me. I need to have my brain constantly stimulated by whatever's going on. I can't, I can't deal with this slow stuff, you know? It's bad, it's bad for my brain. I need it to be fast paced. Pizzas. In the morning afterwards, 
five different pizza companies sent pizzas to my hotel room under <coughs> my dead name. Obviously, it isn't the pizzas that are the problem. Yummy. But it's a threat that they make. She then had her Uber account hacked multiple times, doxing her again, and had hundreds of dollars worth of stuff delivered to her. And every time she would get doxed, she would blame it on Kiwi Farms, encouraging <laughs> services like Cloudflare to drop the site so it would be shut down. This story blew up even more in the media where she would be labeled a trans activist. I'm a high profile transgender activist. There's a big target on my back. The community that I built online was the only time you ever felt like a normal teenager. <laughs> the target on my back is because of that. She would officially declare war on Kiwi Farms and its owner in a video titled, Things Have Escalated, Now I'm in Hiding. This blew up the GoFundMe even more. And just like before, she would continue to raise the gold. Hey, it was already over $70,000 and she's like, actually- Speak of the devil, what if I give him a call real quick? Is he still on? He probably is. Nick! Hello. How's it going? How was your stream, buddy? Thanks for the raid. Oh, you have my soundboard muted, you yeah. I do, true. Ah, nobody nobody good. can hear you. got it. me good. I got, got you good. good. How was the stream? Did you enjoy it? Oh, dude, it was fun. What has been interesting is the tipster thing. I'm sure you covered it, and I did cover it too, but I love the like him reaching out to YouTube. Like, why is my stuff not in search results? And they're basically just like, get good. Like, You're irrelevant. Literally, they're like, <laughs> it shows the most them. relevant stuff. Your channel appears to not be very relevant, which is why you're not getting any attention. It's like, dude, base. That's awesome. Dude, he sucks so much. It's just so fun to rip on him. Did you see like Keppel's new video hours. about Bosch? The new, new one? Where was there a new, the, like, like a week ago? Like, yeah, like days seven ago? days ago. I hadn't even watched it. She's like, I'm yeah. disappointed by the fact that he was so reckless. It's like, is that the main problem here, really? And then she almost takes ownership. She's almost like, and I think it's kind of dumb for me to say that everybody who criticizes me is mad at me because I'm trans. And yeah, I'm like, oh, that's good. And then she's like, but they're actually mad because of Kiwi Farms. And it's like, oh, brother. Yeah, Kiwi Farms, the people who checks notes didn't dox her. Right. Kiwi Farms, the people who checks notes, out. documented the fact she sent hormones to kids, or sorry, she paid a website that sent hormones to kids. Like, so awesome. They'll well, never like, take she responsibility. She straight up lied and said that, like, they're the ones who doxxed and swatted her when that's, like, verifiably yeah. not the truth. But how base is it Again, that, like, two years ago, this person, or like a year and a half even, was, like, on the top of the internet, like, killing it. We were, like, so blackpilled. And now it's like, well, you got what you f***ing deserve, bitch. Like, good. I'll tell you one thing. The one good thing Elon did when he took over <laughs> Twitter is make it so people like Keppels can't get everyone banned on Twitter anymore. Yeah, that I agree. Like the, he's ruined the site with like hundreds of stupid features. The, the website is now filled with bots more than it ever has been before. But Keppels can't call in a ban, so I guess that's good. It's based, dude. I love it. Well, didn't she? She tried to get you banned back in the day. You remember that? <laughs> uh, yeah, and tipster was we used to a tipster knew exactly who the uh the other the mods were gay fesh or whatever who was trying to flag my shit down that's one of his best friends now base <laughs> good 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 friend tipster good friend of the channel shout out shout out april he hangs out with flaggers and scammers that's that's his, his flaggers his, scammers uh, and people who send hormones to kids base yeah. dude or sorry people who well, fund no, a website a that sends hormones today to about kids about how he's pro hormones for kids actually no yeah i watched it i found it by accident. i literally don't like, believe you he literally did a whole stream today where he defends hormones for kids yeah no he didn't yeah yep no yep he said that some people might find it controversial but he does not that is insane well this... he, he, went, he went a step further it wasn't just hormones it was puberty blockers this guy should be in f jail <laughs> this guy should be in jail puberty blockers for kids yeah literally just lock all of them up i don't care anymore get rid of them all dude that's crazy. Literally, like, this afternoon while he was getting raided by uh, Chris the Narc or whatever, he's just like, all right, well, now that I have the commentary community watching me, let's talk about kids and hormones. It seems like uh, it seems like things are going a little dark now. It seems like, you know, the sun is setting on drama. We might not have anything for a day. I'm not going to hold my breath here, but, you know, we haven't had anything new for a little bit. It's mostly been the same retreaded, you know? No well, new I mean, Minecraft allegations. Dude, the Slazo situation was reincarnated into the George Not Found allegations. Literally. Right down to the fact that, like, the accuser went on vacation. Yeah, that after sucks. After dropping it. It literally is just straight up a, re like, a, it was a rerun. It's All right, I'm going to jump out. I want to get some shit done. Um, but it was nice chatting with you, buddy. All right, take it easy, bro. Good job on the streams lately. They've been killing it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Peace out. Goodbye. All right.
I think we got to keep watching. What were we watching before? We got sidetracked by Nick. I don't even remember. I honestly don't even remember. I'm watching Willie. Yeah, we were watching Willie Mac. Yeah, I remember now. Like, actually, from this point on, now it's for the lawsuit. Until then, I am keeping the GoFundMe up, but any donations <laughs> towards it from this point forward will be strictly towards the legal fund. Her attitude towards doxing would completely change. She'd say she needed to flee again, but to Europe. She needed to flee the internet to Europe. It makes no sense. You can't flee a website. Statistically speaking, the people doxing her likely didn't live anywhere near her. Streamers get swatted all the time. They don't flee. They don't travel to Europe announcing every country she's going to. She would then buy an IRL streaming setup so she could stream in the streets. But IRL streamers get doxed even more. So you have to flee to Europe so people don't know where you are, but you're streaming your location. You go to TwitchCon, but you're streaming your location. People would become suspicious of her intentions raising the goal. And she chalked them up as conspiracy theorists. People were so gracious, they came together and they helped me out. And while I really respect it, it's brought a lot of people to do the QAnon brain bullshit about me, where they're saying I'm stealing money from my fans. She announces she's going to Spain, then Ireland, staying with someone who's already been doxxed. This is stupid. She's mad at people for questioning her intentions of fleeing the country and buying a new streaming setup, but look at this. She would get doxxed for a bomb threat called in at a food truck because she's streaming herself there, and her response would be, oh, I just didn't think about it. So why would you tweet like, hey, there's this, you know, I don't know, like a truck, right? Like a food truck I that Kiwi Farms threatened a bomb. That. You never tweeted no, that no. there's a truck that Kiwi Farms threatened a bomb and you're gonna IRL stream there? Uh, oh yeah, no, I, I did. I was gonna go to the truck. As yeah, I, so like you're super dangerous, had, so I'm gonna go to the truck? Yeah, I already had police connections while I was in Ireland. And they knew ahead of time where I was going. But you had police connections in, Ca in uh, yeah, Canada, and they knew where you were going, right? Yeah, <laughs> like what's your point though? It's my point is none of this makes sense, Scaffolds. Like, are you, are you, do you think I'm like a robot? Like I, I am going to make like, 100% the most logical decisions when I'm scared. They're just asking you to stop posting your location. She's such a weasel. And every time she'd get doxxed, the media storm would start all over again. Kiwi Farms chasing kevels around the world. Bigots hound transgender streamer forced to hide out in Belfast. And I'm pretty sure that they called in, like they tried to swat us. We can't tell if yeah. it's the same person. We can't tell if it's the same person, but shortly after, this photo was taken. The police knocked on the door to tell us that someone had reported a murder in this flat. Her fans were concerned as to why she was telling people where she was going. And she's like, Europe's big, Ireland's dense. I'm currently in Ireland. I am staying with a friend. I'm safe. Things are good. Don't tell people what country. It is completely fine. Do you know how dense I fully Ireland believe, by the way, she wanted to be doxxed at this point. She was just encouraging people to dox her because she knew it would make her look like more of a victim. I mean, she admitted to as much. She was like, I made myself a lightning rod. She wanted to be doxxed so she could cry about it. Yes. That's literally it. Very dense country. Every IRL streamer to ever exist gets doxxed and swatted. She would be asked by Nick DiOrio and Keemstar about this. Yeah, but I always thought to myself, I'm like, if people are really out to get you and you're in hiding, you're like live streaming like at VidCon. Like, I feel like you're like, Oh yeah. They're not really in hiding. I hi I wasn't at that point. Like I hired um a security consulting firm and I was basically like, Do you think things have chilled at this point? And they're like, Yeah, probably. So you aren't fleeing. This is just a vacation. She would contradict herself again in a private Patreon stream. I have not been able to focus on actually taking legal action because I was still I was still concerned for my well being and my safety. The only reason I ended up going to TwitchCon is because a security firm that I hired, and I can't go into the specifics because I signed a non-disclosure agreement, told me that they thought that the heat died down and it would have been safe for me to travel there, which I essentially see as a work trip. What about everything else you've been doing? She won't answer. Which is it, Keffels? I feel like she's only saying she's fleeing to justify not working on the lawsuit, which is what most of the money was raised for. In the same stream, she would admit to purposely putting herself in a doxable position so that she would get more media attention. By intentionally making myself a lightning rod so I could make Kiwi Farms more vicious and attack me to the point where she admits it here, right? I don't think there's any. Clad Flair had no choice. I don't think there's any doubt about it here, right? She literally is admitting here too. Ooh, those desk sounds are creepy. I don't like the bug sounds. She's literally, she's literally admitting here to doxing herself intentionally so that she could get more attention and cry wolf. I mean, what more proof do you need? She's a piece of shit than that, right? I feel like there's almost none needed. But I mean, this video goes into a lot of stuff. Does he go into the DIY HRT directory? I'm. Um, 
I feel like he probably doesn't even need to, but I'm curious if he does. It's because every time they attacked me, I publicized it. One of the things that I did intentionally <laughs> for the success of the campaign was make myself a lightning rod. I egged them on. I egged Kiwi Farms on. I wanted them to attack me because by doing that, I was able to show the world how vile they are. She wrote in her Discord, oh, it's just Kiwi Farms chuds. I don't know, they could keep laughing at me. They effed with me and I got 100K. Directly got them deplatformed from Cloudflare. I won. And Keffels would redirect the hate towards Kiwi Farms and their provider Cloudflare. I was up till like 8 a.m. because we decided at the last minute to do a protest in front of where the Cloudflare Connect conference is being hosted in Sydney, Australia. The Online Safety Act actually forbids cyber abuse content like the kind that's hosted at Kiwi Farms. Mm -hmm. And apparently Kiwi Farms does get routed through Australia. It does, yeah. So unless the people who run the servers that get routed through Australia are willing to pay a $500,000 fine, they need to drop Kiwi Farms. But here's the thing, the people doxing and swatting Keffels was- Hey guys, let's see if we can find this innocent business for doing nothing because they're hosting a website that documents my trans fart or whatever. Have you guys seen that stuff? I can't show it on YouTube, but it's really crazy. It's really crazy. It wasn't Kiwi Farms. It was actually a much more malicious website. I'm not going to name the site because if 100,000 people watch this video, statistically speaking, a couple of them are going to be crazy. I don't want them looking up her or her family's personal information. So I will call it Website Zero. Website Zero is what Keffels portrays Kiwi Farms as. Kiwi Farms is a glorified gossip forum where people troll and use slurs. People do dox on it, but it's not what the site is for. Saying otherwise is like getting doxed on Twitter and then saying all of Twitter is a doxing site. Website Zero is a malicious group of hackers and doxers. Mental to harass their target, not just online, but in real life as well. They had the email that got her swatted. They have proof of her hacked Uber Eats orders, showing that's how they kept doxing her. They explained how they confirmed her Bart new address in Ireland literally. with the dox of her roommate by the shape of the doorknobs in the background. When her family was swatted, what website was actively talking about it at the time? Website Zero. It's like the most complicated way to harass somebody. They would even fool me when they would file a complaint for the copyright claims board on behalf of Keffels using White Forest as the copyright enforcer, trying to make it look like she wanted to revoke Kiwi Farms safe harbor privileges. You could read just how ridiculous that sounds. I reached out to White Forest and the person who filed the claim and they said they never did. You need to put a lot of personal information to file a complaint like this. Meaning it was most likely Website Zero and she knows it's been them the entire time actively trying to silence people who talk about it. Saying in her DMs with Destiny, I was scared. Website Zero users aren't stupid like Kiwi Farms users. So this whole campaign is built off of a lie. Website Zero was too scary to go after. So she made it about the infamous troll site. Like what? Is 4chan next? Hey, it's more more marketable anyway. All of us are here talking about like website X. We're all talking about how how bad it is, um, how it's like it's like a secret, how we don't speak the name of it, but everyone knows it and everyone's worried about it. And it's like it sounds like the perfect website for a campaign for them to get dropped by their service provider. Like it's just this is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, don't, it's like, I don't think the momentum is there for that though. Like with the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign, it was just really opportune timing. I had all this media oh, attention opportune. on me and journalists really like following everything I said and did. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't even know about the second website until they went after me. Yeah, but um, when you describe it as like a worse version of the same website, but whoa, please don't talk about it. That's crazy. It's like it's different. It's, it's, if it's still affecting us from websites like Twitter, I don't know what the point of going to every individual random website is to try to start a change. Oh, yeah, no, I think, yeah, no, I don't think it would be effective. Well, that's what you did. And it wasn't effective. Kiwi Farms is still up. And if she's deceiving her audience, her donors, and the media about this, it makes me question her lawsuit a whole lot more. Objection! When I was covering her lawsuit two years ago, I was seriously questioning if she had any real plans with the money. It's now crystal clear to me that she didn't. It started off with all the money over $20,000 would go to a law- Imagine how the people who donated $100,000 feel about this, by the way. $100,000, that's money that could change anyone's life. And she took it and has done nothing with it for years. Literally nothing. All these like seemingly well-meaning trans people in her audience who weren't involved in like the crazy doxing, swatting, harassing, whatever stuff. Like they were just like chilling. You know, trying to see her stop getting harassed literally all got fleeced 
for 100K. Crazy. Lawsuit against the police for violating my rights. And build a legal fund to protect my rights. Uh, and on Sorrenti's end, the story is not yet over. She's waiting for London Police Service to finish their investigation and told Global News she plans to sue. She'd continue to encourage people to donate by out. saying legal fees are expensive and that she's consulting with three lawyers. People have been really uh, questioning, mostly bad faith people. I haven't seen a lot of people do this in good bad faith. faith. But I've had a lot of people questioning my. Are you acting in good faith, Governor? People kept asking me why I'm raising the goal when it hits the goal. And the reason why is because, yes, I'm using these funds to move. But more importantly, once I'm safe, the rest of those funds are going to be used for legal expenses. Then it became, well, I might sue the police. I'm not right sure. Now. They've been nice to me. After it first that. happened, I was very mad at the police. And I wanted to hold their feet to the fire as much as possible. I wanted to even potentially pursue legal action against them. But they've <laughs> taken the threat against my life very seriously. And... So what's the money for now? I then? want to see justice. It then becomes, I never said I was going to sue the police at all. I was being very careful with my language. I keep raising it. The reason that I did that in the first place was because I wanted it to be $100,000 from the beginning, but I didn't know if I would get that money. So when it kept coming in, I just kept raising the cap until I got there. I never said that I was going to <laughs> sue the police. I wanted to be very careful with the language that I used. I mean, you because literally said you plan to. I don't know exactly. You did literally say you plan to, and the news reported that to potentially, you know, thousands of people, maybe tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands on the news in Canada. Where did that go? Where'd that go, Kefels? What happened to that, huh? Where'd that go? Exactly what the plan is. Were you being intentionally misleading when you wrote that? Well, I didn't say. It's clearly the impression everyone got. The way she writes off people is hilarious. They just keep shifting it further and further so they can just keep trying to raise as much money as possible um one of the yes problem <laughs> a few weeks later keffels would hire a private investigator to dox a kiwi farms user she thought doxed her and send some photos of him and his parents except that's not him so she just doxed a random guy keffels would claim that these are fake but the guy proved it by linking it back to her discord but we don't even need that because keffels bragged about doing it herself at 3 a.m before promptly deleting the tweet when people would ask for a breakdown for how the money is being spent she refused to elaborate saying i will never do a gofundme breakdown for bad faith actors everyone who has donated has a refund button somebody asks can you prove you were pushing litigation I have no intentions of knowing what it is or what you're pushing can you just give us some proof you are actually pursuing legal action Keffels would reply can you prove this tweet didn't ratio you he would ask again can you show one piece of evidence you paid for a lawyer with the money donated towards your legal fund and she would respond with a woe jack showing a breakdown of the money donated you for legal purposes should be something you want to do it's so easy to prove you just need receipts it wouldn't be until a month later where Keffels would admit that she hasn't worked on the lawsuit just like explaining all of the things that have happened that have made it hard for me to focus on getting to the point that I could even consider legal action. She was busy with vacation, dude. Now I'm going to be focusing more on the legal things because I'm settled down, I'm back in Canada, and I have time to work on this now. At this point, she would say she can't name who she's suing because then it would give them time to burn all their evidence. During the process of actually taking legal action, one of the first steps that you need to do is collect evidence. And if you announce prematurely you who you are taking legal action against, it gives that party an opportunity to try and destroy as much evidence as possible. I can't, I'm not even going to publicly comment on the party either. A few weeks later, she'd go on live stream, seemingly inebriated, saying she's depressed. Hello, Keffels. I'm a three months HRT trans girl. I'd just like to say where, you're my role model. Where, where the money went, based on this live stream, Look, and how zooted she is, and wonder I'm where that proud money of went, you. dude. I wonder where that money went. Huh, where did that money go? But you should, you should pick a better role model. Like for instance, Spongebob, because like, Spongebob's never done anything wrong, I don't think. <laughs> Spongebob never done anything? What are you talking That's, about? Yeah. Are you You're gonna make more less thirst TikToks? Yeah, I guess. Out. Shut up. I don't know. <laughs> Shut For a hundred bucks, it's hard to turn down. <laughs> That's like one Uber resort, dude. Good. How am I supposed to turn that down? Join the club. Get, step in the line. Her family would beg her to get off. Could you grab me the mic arm?
<laughs> what? <laughs> Can't even mute your mic? What? <laughs> I wouldn't really hear from Keffels for a while until That's she awesome. announced she was signing up for rehab. In the next few days, I'll be admitted to rehab. The doctor said because of the drugs I'm addicted to, without medical supervision, detoxing will kill me. This was in February, meaning this whole time she might have been addicted. When she got out of rehab, she held a Patreon-only stream saying she was addicted to drugs since she talked to Keemstar. This is before she even determined who she was suing. Around the end of 2022, I started drinking, um, which made me spiral. It was around the time that I was in fights with Keemstar. Yeah, it makes the stream make a lot more sense. And then as more and more started happening, I started doing cocaine at the start of 2023. Based. Keep going. Eight days. <laughs> eight days into a cocaine bender, I found out that the coke that I was doing was cut with meth. So for eight days straight, I was doing coke and meth. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. I had a friend come over to help me <laughs> detox. And I tried to just go back to my life like nothing ever happened. And I tried my best to make it so no one knew how bad things were. This person, by the way, literally was, was happy about the fact that Mr. Medicare has cancer and was cheering it on, hoping he dies because he was mean to her on Twitter about her uh, encouraging a website to sell bathtub hormones to people without parental knowledge. So who cares, dude? Whatever happens is base. Whatever happens is base and epic. Not that bad things should happen to anyone, but if it does happen, that's base. That's awesome. Me when I do math. Literally based. Because I, I really didn't like want to let people out. down. Especially because I know there's a lot of people in my audience that look up to me. And I don't, Whoa. I don't want to. That was a good idea. I don't want to let them down. She talks about how an argument in a Twitter space made her want to off herself. I was going through coke withdrawal while I was deal, like while I was in that Twitter space and I was so irritable that I just had to pause for a second and I started calling them retards. After the fallout from all of that and all of the drama, I decided it. I figured out how to get drugs on the dark net and I started making a plan to kill myself. I started doing coke and meth and benzos and I was planning on ordering heroin from the dark net. I wouldn't wish drug addiction on my worst enemy, but I also wouldn't trust them with $100,000. And if you think the money situation is confusing, wait until you see the actual lawsuit. <laughs> On May 3rd, 2023, Keffels would finally present the official lawsuit going through the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario, and it would be against London Police Services. These are just papers, nothing's gone to trial yet. Congratulations to Keffels for actually getting something filed and settling on the police like her GoFundMe insinuated. I had my doubts. However, the lawsuit's claims that some of Keffels' goals don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Some of her complaints line up copy pays from the GoFundMe. Like at the time up. of arrest, Sorry, LPS bro. officers referred to Clara by her dead name. Or the management system meant that some things were booked under her dead name, and that her property was labeled under it. During the arrest, the police officer referred to me by my dead name. This is one of the property bags returned to me after I was released from custody. It's her old last name. Does that quantify as a hate crime? If a woman's arrested and referred to under her ex-husband's last name, is that really a violation of her human rights? The police defense is that it was a clerical error due to her having interactions with the police before she changed her name. The police chief also notes that they need to develop a mechanism to ensure accuracy and avoid hurtful or disrespectful interactions in the future. Ultimately, it's up to the court. If you've been to Ontario, Ontario, the police there are like extremely cucked. Like the idea that they were doing this to intentionally misgender her is crazy because they they want to respect pronouns. Like they're like the most LGBT friendly police of all time. So there's no there's no reason to think that they did anything wrong unless you want to lie intentionally for 
clout, which I guess she managed to do pretty good. Determine right. if this is discrimination well, I guess or not. I'm just LPS wrong. and LPS's record system failed to record that Miss Sorrenti was transgender and was at greater risk of a swatting as a result, despite being warned in March 2022. Heffel's brother warned the police that she was a swatting risk five months before the swatting incident. In fact, my brother called London Police Services on March 27th <coughs> in a conversation lasting nine minutes and 16 seconds to see if my family could be put on a no swatting list only to be treated like we were wearing tinfoil hats and completely dismissed. It is ridiculous that they didn't take her seriously despite her being such a large creator. This next one though, I'm convinced she just made it up. At the time of arrest, one of the officers pressed her hand against Miss Sorrenti's breast and said, yep, it's a she. What? She has never mentioned this happen. before. Not in her Kickstarter, right, not in her initial happen. video, not in any of her yep, streams following she. it up. Maybe I'm missing something and someone can link me because I find it impossible that she hasn't mentioned this before now. It also states that since Keffels was stressed from the swatting, she saw a 25% reduction in income. No notice how her understanding of events and the way that she wants to be portrayed is like simultaneously they misgendered her and also that they were like um this is clearly a woman to show that she's like passing you know what i mean like that is ridiculous that is ridiculous bro this is surprising because this is when she was at her most relevant i assume she just streamed less her case is demanding that lps admit they discriminated against her that they pay the damages to her dignity and self-respect of seventy five thousand dollars have the lps compensate her loss of income and special damages in the form of fifty thousand dollars she wants them to change her record management system and have lps officers use body cams when interacting with trans members and it's true the city of london did not have body cams when swatting her but the city of london already had an initiative to get body cams on officers by the beginning of 2025 not just for trans interactions, but all the time. Oh, she fuck, DM'd me in February saying, the cops have good lawyers. Of course they do. If I could get one thing from all this, it would be body cams. Since the police don't use them in my hometown, it's my word versus theirs. The next few sections is asking them to apply by human rights laws. And it ends with saying that if Kevils wins the case, the LPS needs to publish the verdict to the front page of their website. It's so petty, I love it. <laughs> now there's a lot of questions relating to this complaint. When this was filed on April 10th, 2023, in response, LPS launched an investigation on themselves with the Special Investigations Unit saying this was the first time they ever heard of the alleged assault. And they determined that they found themselves innocent, but I haven't gotten the report yet. So take that however you want. Also, Keffels, in a now deleted tweet she posted in February 2024, the papers have been processed, but they are still awaiting dates to appear before the tribunal. I'm told this could take between a minimum of two years and at worst six years. She's claiming that the trial has not even started yet, which may be true, but she deleted it a minute later. I don't know how to take that. She's so not transparent, it's hard to tell when she's lying, when she's telling the truth. It makes the research process for this so painful. Painful. I tried reaching out to her in DM, sending two messages. She then proceeded to block me and called me a stalker for signing up for her Patreon to do research, even though she's done this exact same thing. She's making it seem like reaching out before making a video is a bad thing. It's not. I have a lot more to say about Keffels when it comes to the promotion of her DIY hormones for minors, her self-destructive cycle, the Catboy Ranch oh, Discord, and the into Human it? Rights Tribunal case. But I need more time to confirm that information, video, so subscribe to the channel. I want to shout out Doomer Media, who did a lot of the legwork in the- oh, Doomer Media is the guy that made the wash video. Honestly, overall, good video. Um, Lily Mac is usually pretty good with the research, but this one was uh, particularly fire, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to see Keffels getting what she deserves, which is to be documented. And, shot. and be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members-only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. Yeah.